the Engwe Engine Pro 2.0. This baby has a 750 watt motor putting out 1200 watts of peak power at 75 newton meters of torque. It has a torque sensor, full suspension, and an eight speed Shimano Altus derailleur. Hydraulic disc brakes and a 52 volt 16 amp battery. And did I mention this thing folds in half? All right, now for the fun part. Let's take this baby out and see what it can do. All right, let's get to the first ride of the Ing Ingway Engine Pro 2.0. I think this is the, the first bike I've been able to just swing my leg over the back on. <laughs> All right, let's go down this way. Got it in PAS1, gear three with this torque sensor, and it's feeling really nice. Let's upshift. It's, looks like fifth gear, cruising easily, PAS1 at almost 15 miles an hour. But let's try something. Let's try PAS zero and how and see how easy this bike is to pedal if you ended up running out of battery power. Go right around the turn here. Stop. Put it in PAS zero. Put pedal. I might have to shift back. Let's see how it started in one first gear. All right, let's get going. Well, I tell you what, this is the easiest bike I have so far to pedal with no power. So if you ever got caught out somewhere and ran out of battery power, and you're on fairly flat ground, you will have no problem pedaling this back. This is easy. See how it is in two. Yeah, and you can see I'm almost cruising at what, nine miles an hour? Okay, let's go back into the PAS levels. PAS one. Let's take it all the way to eight. How fast can we go in PAS one? With just an easy stride. Cruising at 17, 18. We get up here across this turn, go that, go to the left. I'll put in PAS2. A little torque on the pedals, see what happens. Starts to pick up nicely, not harsh. Let's go to PAS2. There we go. It's cruising at 20 miles an hour. And PAS2, eighth gear. I'm giving a little oomph from myself. But something that'll get you good exercise. All right. We're going to PAS3. Okay, we're in PAS3. Still pedaling the same amount. 22 and a half. Now my legs are going a little faster. Let's see how it does on this little uphill right here. Kept just about 18 miles an hour going up that little hill. Go 
pull over here and check something out real quick. All right, took a little stop right there just to readjust the camera angle because I thought I had it pointing too low. So all you see it is just this part. But anyways, where were we? We were in PAS3, just cruising along, eighth gear. That torque sensor is doing a fantastic job. You give it a little oomph and it gives you a little more oomph back. Let's try this. Let's go down here. We'll use throttle through this. I want to test it out right here. Let's see how it does on this little thing. Oh, this baby's a climber. It is a climber. All right, how is PAS4? Two, 23, you better slow down. Wait till I get a nice clear straightaway and try that again. Okay. No he's coming. Here we go. 18, 19, 20, 21, 24. Little uphill. So, 24 and a half. Giving it some some pretty good oomph on my legs to help it along. But you know what's coming next? PAS five. And then we'll do throttle only. But let me. get to a clear spot where I won't be endangering people on the trail. But before we get that, let me talk about the comfort level. Right. This seat is probably the best stock seat I have gotten from any e-bike. It is very similar in construction in material to the, the Cloud 9 seat. Just a little narrower. But so far, no discomfort whatsoever. And it's the first bike where I've gotten on it and had the perfect riding position. Bars are just lifted up about an inch on this stem riser right here. These things can go up about, probably about this high. Where I have them now, perfect. Arms are almost level straight across. It's a nice relaxed position. My legs aren't coming up too high. It actually feels great. You know, I've never considered a, a, a bike styled like this. I always go after the, you know, 26 inch wheel fat tire bikes, the big guys. And these just didn't really ever appeal to me. But I, I tell you what, I think I've changed my mind. This is really a nice bike. And the fact that it can fold in half for all those of you who don't have a pickup or a bike rack, this can fold up and throw it in your trunk, throw it on your back seat if you have a big enough back seat. Put it in your motorhome, your trailer, and take it with you. And that's just a really nice bonus. I was worried about the, the folding mechanism and how secure it is when it's, when it's in the riding position. Like if that hinge would 
come unlatched. And you'd find yourself laying on the, the pavement. But it is very secure and it locks. So I am not worried about that. Same with the handlebars because these handlebars do fold down for when you fold it up and you're gonna store it or, or put it in your car. It has a very similar locking mechanism. Kind of a positive lock. All right, we're in the clear. Let's go to PAS5. Give it a little oomph, see what we can do. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Gotta slow down. We'll go up here and see if we can do better than that. Okay, we'll try this again. 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 22, 25, 26, 27. It cuts out at 27 and a half miles an hour. And you do have to give it a little oof yourself to get it up to that, that point. If you ever need to go that fast. But we'll get up here and then we'll do throttle only and see what it can do. So while we're looking for a, a clear spot to do that. Let me talk about a, another feature of this. You can lock this battery out or you can lock the bike out with a key. Underneath where the battery is, to turn the battery on, you have to put the key in and turn it on. Now that key stays in place. So if you go somewhere, say, to the store or a cafe where you're gonna get a snack or something, sit outside and you're worried about your bike. Well, first of all, you should be carrying the lock around with you anyways. I don't know what that guy was yakking about said something to me just keep on riding just keep on riding right right okay well anyways should be taking a lock with you anyways but you can disable the bike by turning the, the key and pulling the key out it disables the battery they can't turn it on right away so if you have that plus some other type of locking mechanism, you know, going through the wheels and the frame and stuff. You should be pretty good. I mean, after that, they would have to pick the thing up and carry it away. But if you're in a place where you can keep an eye on it, they're not gonna have time to do that. Okay, we'll go up here, come to a dead stop, and go. Now, I'm not gonna time how fast it gets there. We'll just see how, how well it does together on its own. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, cuts off at about 20.8 miles an hour. And I am a 250 pound dude. And that was some pretty good acceleration. But I really believe this thing is a good climber. So we'll go find ourselves some, some uphill and see how it does. But first, we'll do a little brake testing. I'm gonna get up here and cross the road where it straightens out a little. I can get up some good speed and we'll hit the brakes. Now these are hydraulic disc. And I believe they're uh, 160 millimeter. I could be wrong. Let me get off and check real quick. I don't want to give you guys the wrong information. Let me get across the street here and I'll check it out. You hear that? That was the horn. No ding ding bell. We got a horn, see? <laughs> okay. 
Let me stop right here and I'm gonna take a look at the rotors. say yep 160 millimeter rotors but they do a fine job stopping so far we'll do a test up here after I get up past this this lady up here walking all right we'll speed it up 20 Ready? Go. Not bad. Not bad. Back in, started locking up. Let's try it again. See this shadow right here? That's what we'll use as a marker. Ready? Okay. All right, this is where I hit the brake, right at the end of this shadow, and that's where I end up stopping. Two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, two, twenty-three, about twenty-four feet. Give or take a shoe size. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Find ourselves a little hill. This bike really is comfortable. And I'm not saying it, just saying that. I was really worried about a bike this short and this style being too uncomfortable. Now, the, one of the things I like to see them offer maybe as an accessory when you order is wider bars because I think for us taller riders it, it feels a little like your hands are too close together and you don't have the it seems well you got good control but it just seems like in some situations you you find yourself going like that not a wobble not that bad but and I think if you had them out a little wider maybe out to here the taller guys would feel a lot more comfortable. But that's just me being nitpicky. I think for most people, the stock setup is gonna work perfect for you. The only thing you probably wanna do is maybe put a cell phone holder on, some type of bottle holder, cup holder, and you're good to go. And this seat is still really comfortable. I don't think I'm gonna to have to upgrade it at all. So I can see this is just the first of many rides on this bike. I'm really enjoying this. This would be a really nice bike Hi, to take down by the beach. Hi, let's do a little uh, gravel. And the full suspension is doing really nice too. The rear shock is a thousand pound shock. And it's taking these gravelly little bumps here in stride. And I think that's probably attributing to why the seat is so comfortable also. It's just absor absorbing the shocks. Okay, the other thing I wanted to talk about about this bike is the fit and finish. 
they did a, a really good job. It looks like they really take their bikes seriously. They're not just trying to throw something together on a frame to get it out to market, to make some money off of it. It looks like they sat back and took some time designing this thing. And then when the designers gave it to the engineers, told the engineers, here's our design. We want it done professionally. Everything needs to look like it's been cared for. And I tell you what this bike does. I hate to take it out on the dirt like this and get it dirty. It's just a, a really well designed, really put to, nicely put together. And those fenders, they're metal, <laughs> not plastic. All right, let's go find that hill. Okay, we are gonna roll into this hill. This is the beginning of the hill here. We're gonna roll into it at, from a dead stop on throttle only. It goes up and it gets a little steeper as it goes up around that corner. I'm gonna make sure there's no cars coming so I don't get anybody's way and here we go. Okay, starting to go up. 15, 16. almost 17 dropping down a little right, coming up to the steeper part 14 14 and a half it's tapering off a little 15 and a half we're going to go around this turn where I think it's going to get really steep You can see the road go up. All right. We're coasting down a little, that's why we're up. So here we go. Up. Oh, falling quickly. This is really steep. 12, 11. 10, 9, I think it's going to do it though, Nine, eight. come on baby, I better uh, drop the gears just in case. I'm not giving it any oomph. I'm just getting the gears in first gear in case I have to give it some help. There's first gear. Six. Five and a half. <laughs> Come on. Now it's hard to keep it in a straight line. Four. <laughs> A <laughs> lady's laughing at me as she go by. <laughs> going, going so slow. That's starting to pick up now. Five and a half. No weird sounds from the motor either. Six, seven. All right, we did it. Here we are. Good bike. It did it. That is a st pretty steep hill. So I sh I'll show you. Now we get to go down. Now, this makes me a little nervous because this is a smaller bike. So I'm gonna hug that seat with my thighs. Woo! 30, 31. Okay, I'm gonna slow down. Let's turn around and let's just do that steep part in pedaling and see if we get a better result. Make sure there's a car to turn around here. Okay. Now we'll go down here. 
and we'll, we'll start from a dead stop. I'm just gonna keep it in first gear. PAS five. Okay, are we ready? Let's go. Got a little steeper section coming up after this telephone pole. And nine. All right, and we're up. So, definitely giving it a little human power. Increase the speed by about four or five miles an hour over battery only. But I'm a little winded, but now we get to ride back down. All right, it is getting a little later in the day now. So let me, uh, point it back towards home and when I get there I'll give you my final thoughts on the first Audi of the Ingway Engine Pro 2.0 all right there you have it first Audi of the Ingway Engine Pro 2.0 we just did uh, 18 miles looks like we went down two battery bars but I was riding probably half pedaling, half throttle this, this ride. But so far, this is a very impressive bike. And this is not the only video I'm gonna do on this. This is just the beginning of a series of videos on this. On this. So stay tuned. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please share, subscribe, like, and I will see you on the next adventure. Bye.